don't call it a comeback because it ain't. Hey everybody, it's Joe the 3D Printing Professor and those who have been watching my channel for a while might know that I have in the past already done a tier list of all the 3D printers that I reviewed. This is not that because that tier list ran into a couple of problems namely that i was trying to use math to justify where i was placing 3d printers on the tier list and that just no matter what i did no matter how i played with the numbers never gelled with my experience of using the 3d printers 100 percent so i have decided instead of that that I would do this. You, you might notice that this tier list is a little bit different than other tier lists. It's not ranked A, B, C, D, F, or anything like that. These are a little bit more subjective titles for 3D printers. And uh, yes, fair. If, if you look at this list and you go, ah, that's Joe's list and it's a little bit silly, I don't agree with it, that's fine. You don't have to. In fact, make your own tier list if you want. But I feel like this tier list is important to establish not just where the 3D printers that I've used in the past go, but where 3D printers that I'm reviewing in the future go. So if I say this 3D printer is for the pros, you can understand the family of 3D printers that it's in and why I'm saying that. I also feel like this gives me a more positive categorization for all the 3D printers that I review because none of these categories, except for that one down there at the bottom, but none of these categories are necessarily bad. None of these categories necessarily don't have an audience of people who would like them. Let's go over the different tiers before we talk about where the 3D printers fit in them. At the top, recommendation. Recommendation is the greatest praise that I can give a 3D printer. If I can recommend this 3D printer to somebody, it means that, well, it means that I liked it first and foremost, but it means that I also looked at it and said, you know who this would be good for. Now, I need to be clear that recommendation is not a blanket statement. If I recommend a 3D printer, that doesn't necessarily mean that you need to run out and buy it right now. It might be recommended for a specific group of people. So when we get to it, we'll talk about that just a little bit more. Now, just below that is fun for all. And this is a category that was actually kind of a late addition to the tier list. I didn't have it on my first draft of this tier list because I didn't think that I needed it. But there were 3D printers that, well, for the most part, they used to be recommendations that just aren't anymore for a number of reasons, but they're still good and they're still solid choices. Fun for all 3D printers are the 3D printers that do a good job of being well, not just good 3D printers, but easy to use 3D printers, well documented, good user interfaces, all that jazz. Below that is for the pros and for the pros 3D printers are 3D printers that aren't good for beginners but not bad 3D printers. They're 3D printers that if you've used 3D printers before, you should have no problem jumping in and using these 3D printers. Now below that is it works and you might notice that it works is the biggest category that we have here is the fattest tier and that's because there's a lot of 3D printers that while I can't complain about them because it works I also wish that they were something better something more we'll get into that tier when we get to it. Now below that is frustration and you might think that frustration is a bad thing and chances are for a lot of people it is but I want to point out something the frustration tier of 3d printers are the only 3d printers that will get you high because these 3d printers there might be something not exactly right with them out of the box they, they have potential but as they are they don't work maybe the documentation for getting them up and running is not very good maybe the parts for them, you got to go out and buy it but when you fix it when you get them up and running, oh, 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 it's a euphoria like nothing else. It's such a great feeling that I know many people who recommend their frustration 3D printers to other people, not realizing that the reason why they had a good time with that 3D printer was because they're the sort of person who doesn't mind 
fixing up a 3D printer. And once they did it, it felt so good that they were like, you got to try this out too. And if you've got the time and if you've got the disposition, you absolutely should. But if you don't, there are lots of other great tiers. Now at the very bottom is a box of crap, a 3D printer that just is not worth even recommending, not worth using. It's a 3D printer that I used and I never could get good prints out of them. Now, you might also notice that my particular tier list has a Y axis, so it's more of like a tier grid or graph. But this Y axis is priced. So as I'm putting 3D printers on this tier list, I'm going to be placing them from left to right in order of price. Did it, was it cheap or expensive? There's also going to be one other piece of data encoded in this. The dot that establishes where they are on here is going to be bigger or smaller based on how big or small the build volume of that 3D printer is. Now I'm skipping out on a lot of data. I'm managing to put a lot of data into my tier list, which tier it's on, what price it is, and how big the build volume is, but there's a lot of other factors that go into a 3D printer that isn't appearing here. So just keep that in mind as we go forward. But let's go forward. Let's start talking about what 3D printers I put in which tier. And let's start at the bottom with the box of crap. So boop. And in the box of crap is only one 3D printer, the Gufu Cube. Now, I have had other 3D printers that I've used that I thought were boxes of crap, but none of them are available now. None of them are a part of an active company that's still trying to take money from people. And I saw the Gufu people at CES this year. So they're still out there. Still, they're still trying to peddle this 3D printer that quite frankly is not well built enough. That has wiggle in the design of the build so that when it ever tries to do a circle, it, it just, there's no reason. This is, this is the only box of crap that you could still potentially buy. And so that's why it's on the list. And I, I think that that's the way the box of crap tier is a, is a hall of shame. If a 3d printer company is trying to sell you a box of crap, they absolutely should go out of business. And if they're out of business, I'm not going to put them on the list because there's no point in considering them in comparison to others. If you just plain can't get them. So there you go. That's, that's the only one left and we'll see how much longer it stays on there or if it gets some company in the future. We'll find out about that. In the meanwhile, let's jump up and see what I put in the frustration tier. Boop. So there are only a couple of 3D printers in this tier. The one that I think people are going to have the most to say about is the SV-07. And I want to point out that while I opened up my box of the SV-07 and identified a number of things that needed to be fixed on it, once I handed that 3D printer over to somebody who had the time and the disposition to fix those things and he tightened up what needed to be tightened up and got the parts that needed to be got and put it in there, he was so excited and proud of this 3D printer. That's what frustration tier is. It's not that they're bad 3D printers. They just require a certain type of person to get up and running with. The Easy 3K7 it's a hundred dollar 3d printer and so you know that argument of well what do you expect for the price yes could absolutely apply to that one and i should bump it up to it works but i've got that on there the price is on there and independent of price it's a frustrating 3d printer to use it's just unfortunately it's not one that you can particularly upgrade to make easier to use it's just by design weird and frustrating to use i i recently went back to my k7 and yeah i was not having a good time with it but you know once you get it running it's pretty exciting all right let's jump up and take a look at what did i put in that why why is that it works category so fat well let's take a look at it yeah that's a lot of 3D printers. And if you take a look at the, the 3D printers on this list, the Mingda Magician, the Artillery Genius Pro, the Focus Odin 5, the SV06, well, SV06 Plus was, uh, all of those 3D printers uh, are basically Ender 3 clones. You notice that there's a lot of Ender 3 clones 
in that category. Now, I, I do want to point out the SV04. That's their IDEX 3D printer. And it's I, I have not done a video for that one because I really didn't have much to say about it. Yes, it works, but it's it's weird and it's fiddly and it's frustrating a little bit to use. But it does work, so there it is. But there you go. It works is a lot of Ender 3 clones. Like somebody was like, oh, I want to make a 3D printer. Let's make the, let's copy the 3D printer that works, maybe document it a little bit better and not really add much to it. There they're fine. They work. If you have any of these 3D printers, you won't be disappointed owning them. You will be able to use them and do cool things with them. But it's just not a category I'm super excited about. Now, however, if you've been doing 3D printing for a while, maybe you want to consider one of the four of the pros. Now, uh, you might disagree with some of these. Uh, the Ender 3 S1 Pro is, again, my review of that one. If you want more information about it, it was good. It's good hardware, but it was so poorly documented that if you don't know how to 3D print, it's not going to help you get there. However, on the other side of things, the Prusa MK3S. Now, I have not used the Prusa 4, and I don't think the MK3S is still available, but I wanted to have it on this list to discuss it. It's a 3D printer that's immaculately documented. There's a great community of people using it, but it really requires a lot of effort, especially I bought the kit. I had to build it. It took me two days to get it up and running. Once it was up and running, it was a great machine. But if you're not willing or, you know, have the time to spend getting it up and running, that's why it's in the For the Pros. None of these are bad machines. Now, the JG Maker Artist D Pro is an, it's another IDEX 3D printer similar to the Sovol SV04, but it's one that maybe it's just familiarity. Maybe that one should be in It Works as well, but I don't know. I like it. It's my large format 3D printer. It's one that I actually use. Again, this is entirely subjective. Let's go talk a little bit about the fun for all category. Okay. Now, in this category are a bunch of 3D printers that m many of them were previous recommendation 3D printers, like the Adventure 3, the Adventure 4, and the Prusa Mini Plus. Now, the King Room KP3S was also a recommendation, and I have to admit, for as difficult as that machine is to use, especially loading and unloading filament, I almost should bump it down to for the pros, and I'm not sure why I don't. Maybe it's because the price is good. Maybe it's just because I like them and the people that I know that use them are having a good time with them. I'm putting it in the fun for all mostly because I want a cheap fun for all option in there. And that's the cheapest one. If you don't have a whole lot of money to spend, if you want to get into 3D printing, it's not a bad one. If you can spend a little, all of these great options, just run them right up the line. And like I said, in other cases, they would be recommendations, but uh, part of the reason they're not is because of who's in recommendation now. Yes, the recommendation tier. These 3D printers are the ones that I absolutely think that people should check out. But let's let's go through them one at a time so that I can talk about who they're for. Now, on the low end is the AO Seed X Maker. This is a 3D printer. This is one of the 3D printers that bumped the Adventure 3 off the list because in package, it's practically an Adventure 3, with the difference being that they downgraded the nozzle, in my opinion. The Adventure 3 is still an easier 3D printer to maintain, if only for how quick and easy it is to swap out the nozzle. But the X-Maker is a solid machine. It works well, but it also comes pre-loaded with a bunch of 3D prints that if you hand this to a kid, even before you load a slicer, they can do a lot of cool prints. And then they've got the app with, again, a lot of cool prints on it. And then you can load a slicer and they can be 3D printing like for real. It is such a great experience for, I would say maybe a, a preteen or teenager if you want to get them into 3D printing for cheap. The X Maker, I think, is a great place to start just for how it grows. Now, if you have a young kid, I'm talking 10 or under, 
the toy box 3d printer is unbeatable if only because the the way that you interact with this 3d printer is through their app or through the website and you just kind of scroll through and go "Ooh, i want that and the 3d printer springs to life and makes it and no other 3d printer has the library of 3d prints that toy builder has or toy box has made if you have the opportunity i highly recommend you go check out at, at least go to the toy box website scroll through the files that they have available and go dang i kind of want that and then go try to find them elsewhere they are exclusive to them and that's what's keeping them on the list i do wish that their 3d printer would you know come up to the modern generation but for their app that's where they are now the creality k1 is a 3d printer that this is another one that bumped the Adventure 3, especially the Adventure 4, off of the recommendation list because it's just as easy to use, maybe not as easy to maintain. Again, love those quick swap nozzles on the Adventure series 3D printers. But the Creality K1 is a solid entry. It's fun, it's easy to use, it's a good price, and it's fast, so it's modern and all that. I like it. I like it a lot. I also really like Creality's... Uh, cloud slicer that works on the k1 if you just don't have a computer or want to get a computer you can still 3d print with a k1 on your phone it's mind-blowing and i love it the bamboo lab a1 mini is a 3d printer that and i talked about this in, in my previous recommendation video but if you think that you might be a little bit inclined to want to try multicolor 3d printing in the future you know, maybe you're a designer and you want to be able to make the sort of thing that just couldn't be injection molded four color prints well then get the mini learn how to use it and then get the ams on there and upgrade your experience if you think that that's a direction that you might take in the future then start there and then there's the carbon x1 and the carbon x1 combo and these are the 3d printers that i still use the most easy to use workhorses solid machines and the multicolor capability now let's take a look at this real fast if we look at this data as it is laid out right here what pattern do you see well the only box of crap on here is a hundred dollar 3d printer but for the recommendations they go up to over a thousand dollars although there is a pretty good spread in the recommendations if we were to plot this data it, it almost looks like it just kind of grows like a tornado so what what does this say well what it says to me is you get what you pay for if you you know want to pay just a little bit there's so many 3d printers in the it works category and most of them are cheap some of them are not as cheap but they have big capabilities they're all right there you can you know learn to 3d print with them they're they're not as expensive but you're going to work a little bit harder on them whereas if you don't want to be working well you're going to have to pay a little bit more for it and i don't want this to be a discouragement to anybody i don't want anybody to be like well obviously i can't get into 3d printing because i can't afford the best and the greatest well, there are some fairly cheap options in the best and the greatest and the fun for all category so you have options but the idea that you get what you pay for i think is really reinforced by looking at where everything falls on this category but what do you think do you agree with the way that i place them is there a 3d printer that didn't show up on this list and where would you put it or you know if i did put one on here that you disagreed with why why do you think it should have gone somewhere else let me know in the comments and i can't wait to hear from you or come join me on my discord at discord.3dpprofessor.com where we have a great community of people who are making great things and helping each other to make great things as well but that's it for this video i want to thank you very much for watching and i want to remind you that you are a child of god so you're special to me so take care of yourself and if you can someone else too i'll see you next time <laughs>